In this video, I'm going to show how you can autoplay a video once it becomes visible in a pop-up. You can see here, I'm going to click on the video, and we're going to pop up with the video. It autoplays automatically. I'm also going to show how you can autoplay a video once it becomes visible to the user on the screen. So I'm going to scroll down a bit more, and we should see the video starting to play automatically. So I have a basic landing page here, and let's say I want to add a video in the hero section here that's going to display my product. This is pretty easy to do with the standard bubble video element. All you need to do is if you go to the design tab of your bubble editor, scroll down and grab the video element, you can drop that in your hero section. Now, there are a couple of limitations with this element. Number one, as we're going to see in a second, the video has to come from either YouTube or from Vimeo. So you can't play videos that have been directly uploaded into your bubble database, but let's just go with YouTube for now. So let's say I want to play this video here. All I need to do is grab the ID, which is the very end of the URL here. Grab that and then paste that into the video ID. And let's just let that take a little bit more width. And let's say we want this to play automatically when the page loads. All we need to do is tick this play the video automatically on load. So let's refresh our application. Now, just to say you're not going to be able to hear the video because the audio source I'm using at the moment is my microphone, but you will be able to see it play. So we refresh. And you can see that video is playing straight away, but we are stuck with playing from YouTube, which means we have the YouTube branding. The same would hold true from Vimeo. So what we're going to do to make this a bit more professional looking is, number one, we're going to get rid of the YouTube branding and we're going to play a video direct from our bubble database. And I'm also not going to have this auto play on page load. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the video thumbnail up and then when the user clicks on the video, a pop-up is going to show and the video is going to auto play in the pop-up. To achieve all this, we do need to use a plugin, and the plugin we're using is the Universal Video Player plugin. This is a Grand for Tech plugin. You can add it to your mobile app by searching for Universal Video Player in the Plugins tab. Once you have the Universal Video Player plugin installed, you're going to have access to a new element, and that element is the Media Player element. So you can see here under Visual Elements, we also have Media Player. I'm going to delete standard bubble video element. I'm going to grab my media player element and drop it in the same section of my hero. And you'll see here there's a couple of things we need to fill out. Uh, the very first thing that's being highlighted is the skin. And the skin essentially decides the style of the video player. There's a couple of different ones to choose from. I'm just going to go with base for the purposes of this video. And then we're also going to need to set a video source. What I could do is I could just take the URL of my YouTube video copy that and paste it in here. That would get me the exact same outcome as I had the first time around, but that's not what I want to do. Instead, I want to play a video that I've uploaded to my bubble database. And I've already done that. If you go into my database and look at data types, you'll see I've created this new data type called video. It has two custom fields, file, which is a file value, and title, which is a text. And if we look at our app data tab, you'll see here I have one entry. If we open that up, you'll see we have an MP4 file, and we have the title, which has come from the title of the video itself. Just to give you a quick sense of how you can upload your own custom videos, I've created a page here called Upload Video. It's super simple. All I have is a file uploader, and every time a file uploader's value is changed, I'm essentially creating a new video, and I'm setting the file to be equal to the file uploader's value, and the title to be equal to the file uploader values file name. So now that I've shown you the video in the database, I'm going to play that in my universal video player. Go back to design. And what we can do is instead of having our YouTube link, we can insert dynamic data. We can do a search for video. And again, you may wish to access this in a different way. I'm simply going to take the first item in my database because I only have one. And I'm going to take its file. So let's refresh our app and just see how that looks.
Okay, so again, it's autoplaying, which we're not going to want, but we have managed to get rid of the YouTube branding and we're playing something direct from our bubble database. I'm just going to make a couple of changes. I'm going to, first of all, let this take up a larger width, make it a slightly larger height. And then what I'm going to do next is, if we go to appearance, I do want this video to autoplay, but only in the pop-up that we're going to trigger in a second. So what I'm going to do is to avoid it automatically playing when the page is loaded, I'm going to scroll down and you'll see here it has an option called autoplay. It's set to true at the moment, but if I change that to false and I refresh my bubble application, you'll see that it's not playing now. Instead, we're just getting this kind of blank video. So we don't really want a blank video either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a thumbnail image just so people might have a sense of what the video is about. If I go back to my design tab and go back to my media player, you'll see here we have an option for poster image and we can either choose a dynamic image or a static image. I'm going to go with a static image for now and I'm just going to use a random thumbnail that I've saved down. And now when we refresh our bubble editor, or our bubble application, I should say, we should have this nice thumbnail, which at least gives us a sense of what the video might be about. So what we want to happen next is when the user clicks on the video, we're going to get a pop-up, and that pop-up is going to autoplay the video. So what I've done is I've already created a pop-up. You can see here it's called pop-up video player, and I've dropped another universal video player, media player element in it. Again, I'm searching for the only item in my database. I just change that to the first item, getting its file value. But the difference here is I've set the autoplay to true. So once this pop-up is opened, we want to trigger this video. What we're going to do to trigger the pop-up is we're going to go back to this part of our hero. And you can see here that there's a group and it currently contains the media player. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another group to this hero content to group. So I'm going to scroll down, grab a group, drop it in here. And this doesn't look great at the moment. So what we can do is let's first of all, just let this, we'll change it to a column and we're going to let it take up the full width and the full height of the space available. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select its first parent, which is the hero content two group. And I'm going to change this layer from a column to align to parent. And now we have this situation where the group is overlaid on top of the universal video player, media player element. And what I can do is I'll put this up the top as well. And then I'm just gonna put the group on the front. So if I go to hero section, hero content two, group B, and then I wanna bring this to the front. I want to take up the full height of the group. Now what I can do is if we refresh our application, we're actually not going to be able to click on the video because the group is on top of it and we can use this group as a trigger to show our pop-up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my group. I'm going to call it a group trigger. Add a workflow for that. And we're going to say when this is clicked, we're going to show an element and the element we're showing is pop-up video player. So let's try that out now. Refresh our application. Click on this. We're shown the pop-up with the video in it and it's playing automatically. So this is more in line with what we wanted. One small issue is I'm gonna restart the video by pressing play. And you'll see when I click out of the pop-up and close the pop-up, the video is actually gonna continue playing so we're going to need to deal with that so let me just show you click play and you can see from the speaker sign up here that the video is still actually playing in the background you won't be able to hear it again because of the audio source but we need to do something to stop that happening i'm just going to refresh my app and what i'm going to do is i'm going to click here to add an event in my workflow i'm going to say when a pop-up is closed we're going to use one of the actions under element actions. And again, because we've installed the universal video player, we have a bunch of different actions we can choose from. And the one I want to do is pause a media player. And we're going to pause media player B, which is the one in the pop-up. So let's refresh again. 
we have our kind of preview. We click on it. It starts playing automatically. But this time when I click out, you'll see in a second that the speaker sign is going to go away because the video was paused when I exited it out of the pop-up. So that's how you autoplay a video in a pop-up. The next example I want to go through is if a user scrolls down the screen and suddenly a video player comes into view, then I want to autoplay the video. So it's only going to autoplay once it's visible to the user on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my design tab. I'm going to grab the video player that I put in the pop-up. I'm going to copy it. And I'm simply going to paste it in to this section down here. And we need something that would allow us to know when the universal video player element is visible on screen. So we're going to use another plugin. And the other plugin we're going to use is the Visibility Detector plugin. It's a free plugin, and you can find it by searching for Visibility Detector. And once you've installed that, we're going to have access to the Visibility Detector element. So I'm going to go back to my Design tab. And you can see it's just down here at the very bottom of our visual elements group. And you can drop this anywhere on your page. I'm just going to drop it in here so we know where it is, but you can put it wherever you want and make it last in the group. And the nice thing is, even though we do need this in our canvas, what we can actually do is we can set the width to zero and the height to zero. To go back to the appearance tab, you'll notice here that there's an element ID field that comes with the visibility detector. And what we can do is we can reference the media player element in this element ID. And in order to do this, you're going to need to go to the settings tab of your bubble editor, click on general, scroll down to the very bottom here, and then under advanced options, you'll see the second advanced option is expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. You need to make sure that this is ticked. Once that is ticked, what you'll find is that on every element on your page, at the very bottom, of the appearance tab you'll have an option to add an id attribute so i'm going to call this media player media player scroll i'm going to copy that and then i'm going to go back and find my visibility detector so let me just reveal this in the element tree and then i can see that the visibility detector is here i'm then going to paste that element id into the element id field and now when I go to workflow, what I can do is I can click here to add an event. I can say under elements, when a visibility detector enters the screen, I can play my media player. So this is allowing us to play the video once it enters the user screen. So we'll play a media player or on media player C. And then what I might do is I just might make sure that this is as close as possible to the universal video player. So let me just make that a bit more visible for a second. So you can see there's a bit of a gap between them. So what I might do is actually just group the two of these in another group. And we'll put them in a row container. And then what I'll do is I'll set this to zero and zero again. Okay, so let's test that out. We'll refresh our landing page. And you'll actually see from the speaker up here that this has been playing straight away. And the reason for that, I'm just going to refresh my app, is because I forgot to set the autoplay on this to false. So even though this whole video is about autoplaying videos, we actually don't want to autoplay this. We want to trigger the autoplay once it becomes visible on screen. So let's try that again. Refresh our app. And nothing's playing, but if we scroll down, scroll down, you'll see it starts playing. So again, it's only playing once it's visible to the user on screen. Now, the next thing we want to do is if the user stops looking at it, so they scroll back up, for example, we want to pause the video. Very simple to do this. All we need to do is in workflow is we need to add one more event. It's a very similar event to last time. It's when a visibility detector exits the screen. What are we going to do? Well, in this case, what we're going to do under element actions, we're going to pause a media player. And again, we're going to pause media player C. So let's try this out one more time. Nothing plain when we load the screen, but if we scroll down, 
start to play. And just keep an eye on this kind of speaker symbol up here because if we scroll back up, we should see that vanish in just a second. Bit of a lag, but there you go, it's now been paused. So that's how you autoplay a video once it becomes visible to the user on the screen.